uh, huge. In fact, I, uh, I lived in Japan during my sabbatical, as Mike mentioned, and the house I lived in was made by Toyota. The mattress I slept in was made by Toyota. They make a lot of things. And they kind of own Japan, it looks like, anyway. Um, they're very, very big, but this is just the automobile manufacturing and, and um, assembly. Then we also maintain a relationship with the foundation, and we are starting to develop a closer relationship with Raymond. They make forklifts, class of one, two, and three, and Toyota Metro Handling, which make forklift four and five. Uh, actually, their Toyota owns Raymond, and uh, I learned that through one of the uh, Kick Me former members, who happens to be a dealer at Raymond Corporation Chicago. So um, they're very close by. And we're starting just to get closer to them because they also have an interest in our students and the type of uh, skills they bring to the table. Uh, we keep in contact with them by inviting them, open houses, tours. We send newsletters twice a week, twice a year. And we keep a website as well. Toyota has uh, kept close to RIT. They hire significant co-ops and, uh, and uh, engineers in most years. They get more engineers from RIT than from any other location, university. Um, they, they like the, the, the type of student they get there, um, which is not, by the way, entirely attributable to the lab. It's the other way around, actually. Uh, we have students in all the locations in the US, including the uh, Technical Center in Ann Arbor, which is where they, in fact, one of my first students, they they place in the, uh, his crashing vehicles in an Arbor, which is, I think, the coolest job you could ever have. I, I envy him every day. Um, so um, as part of that relationship, uh, we have an open invitation, and we have taken that many times to visit their facilities. We've been countless times to Tim and mine, Indiana, Georgetown, um, you name it, all these plants. I've been to the ones in Japan. And we can actually, we've been setting up visits by theme. I said, I want to learn about Toyota production control, okay, which is very, very um, detailed. So we made a visit to Indiana, which just covered production control. Spent two days looking and talking and, and seeing their charts and how they see the vehicles moving in those big screens and so on. Uh, we also made another uh, visit to uh, Georgetown, in which I want to learn about the flow. And I take a couple of students and the faculty from the lab, and we go and we actually stand in the receiving docks, which is the most dangerous place you can be in Toyota because they don't have a storage. They actually ship direct to the line. So they have a gazillion forklifts just going at all kinds of speeds. And you got to stand there put until the shift is over. And then you can actually walk out because you're trapped in that massive flow. But, but we are able to, and, and they're generous enough to let us set up a theme and go and visit about what we want to learn on those, uh, including going on training at their facilities, and NAPSC, NA, NASPSC, NASP, which is uh, a copy of the Japanese training facility in, in Georgetown. OK. The assessment and improvement, and uh, I'll make this uh, quick. Uh, we're not there yet, I have to say that, because I promise our guys in the lab that when I brought up this slide, we don't have a one, three, and five year plan. We want to have a one, three, and five year plan. Um, in my mind, I, I kind, of, kind of guess or know what I want to be in three years. I have expansion ideas within the building, and you know, but it's not really in firm. Um, we achieved the last expansion by, by, by planning. We had that, we talked to the dean, we you know, seated the seats and talked to the people that made it happen and supported us, but, uh, but we're not at that point yet. Now, we do keep an A3 that looks like that, that was uh, three, four years old, in which we have some indicators and we kind of monitor the activity of the lab and at least practice the exercise, try to practice what we preach, of monitoring where we have some gaps. Right now, and this is on the discussion, we have five KPIs. Uh, the number of students exposed to the lab, it's an it's a indicator we have brought up from few dozens to few hundreds. Um, and that's not counting the uh, visitors. Uh, the variety of the students we get, okay, 
the number of lab experiences at the depth on the uh, Bloom's taxonomy scale that uh, we deliver and how people evaluate those. Now, you can argue about that. I'm actually not entirely happy with this set, but that was our starting point five years, four years ago. So it's time to revise it. Um, then we do a gap analysis on a regular basis. And uh, some places, if you look at this, these are by, I believe, by course or audience course pair. And in some places, if you look at this, this is the breadth and this is the depth indicator. Um, I guess something cute that one of our staff actually came up with. But in some places, you don't have a gap. In some places, uh, you're here and you want to be there. And you kind of work towards that. Uh, again, this doesn't happen quickly. It's uh, baby steps. We keep it in our minds and we try to uh, have in every uh, morning market review we have every week to see, okay, have we made any progress here? No, yes, so just to monitor that. And then this is a laundry list of all the exercises. This is outdated, but uh, it shows the idea where, okay, do we have Kanbans? Yes, we have exercises in Kanbans that we can deliver here and here and here. Now, the ones that are shadow are hands-on. The ones that are not shadow uh, tend to be more theoretical. Um, so you can see where we are or where we were and where we want it to be. So present situation, current, and future state. OK, so just to wrap up the uh, um, assessment portion, we, we just try to monitor and chart out where we want to be. And we take baby steps towards that particular direction. And I think I, I'm fortunate to have really outstanding people in this lab that have kept me in check because I'm, I'm more of a free form uh, planner, if you will, uh, that allows to take those uh, small incremental improvement steps. And, and, and you, you do that for, for a while, for a long time, and then you end up with a significant uh, progress. And that, that's essentially what we have done with this. Uh, none of this came overnight. If I uh, have to say something about the, uh, the success, again, this worked for us. And I had the fortune to have a department head, a dean, and a provost that were really supportive and still support me on these ideas uh, that now sound less crazy. But you know, 10 years ago, we're, you know, what are you talking about? And, but this may not work in other places. And it may not even be welcome in other places. I know uh, even in upstate New York institutions that discourage faculty from engaging into this type of uh, um, development. But that's not our case. We do get uh, pretty positive feedback from uh, everybody, advisory board, students, ABED evaluators. They all uh, like this type of uh, initiatives. Um, students are able to not only talk the language of employers, but also they're able to um, uh, show they've done. I know how to design campaigns. I have designed campaigns. You know? So it's a different uh, type of uh, uh, selling um, point they happen to be in when they go and interview for a co-op or a permanent employee. Um, it, it's been recognized. It's been uh, evaluated well. So I think, I think we are doing something that is uh, worth uh, continuing. And if I have to uh, give you a couple of uh, bits of advice, and we have not done this. So this is advice that I'm giving that I haven't quite pursued myself. Scale beyond individuals. I've suffered. If you have a relationship, and it's just me and the HR VP of Toyota, she's gone, and she's gone now, and I'm in trouble. If I'm gone from RIT, RIT is in trouble. So if you want to really scale beyond uh, what two people can achieve, then you have to bring everybody on board, and you have to you know, have a continuation of business kind of uh, thinking, if you will. So we have suffered from that a little bit, not too badly, but we're thinking on ways of doing this. It's not easy. That's the other problem is who else can become your advocates? And uh, that would be my first piece of advice. The other one is diversify your sponsorship for all the reasons you can think of. OK. So I think I'm two minutes past my time. I like to entertain any questions you may have and, and make it for sure. 
uh, we're very open to visits. Uh, if you want to uh, reach out to us, I mean, we're very happy to share what we have. So, do you have or do you plan to distance learning courses and practices or remote laboratory concepts and such things? We don't have anything right now lab related. There's courses that the university mm -hmm. delivers. Um, we, we thought about um, trying to create modules that uh, other universities can use. And let me take that back. We are about to, uh, one of the uh, Toyota K-12 uh, deliverables is to have modules that can be accessed online by high schools. So we will have something at that level which is not going to be appropriate probably for universities, but we're thinking about the next step for sure. Yes, sir. Do this again, what do you think your setup cost to be? Setup cost? Yeah. Well, it's not as high as you think you, it is. If you talk about equipment, there's probably, uh, okay, let's talk about space I cannot quantify, because obviously that's so dependent on every location and politics. Uh, the biggest effort wasn't put into getting the monitor by the it was actually developing activities, because if you want to have an ex what we call it experiences, uh, you have to have the case, you have to have the fiction, you have to have the mind, you have to have the person, but then, then what are you going to teach with that? Developing that is what we spend most of the time still today on. Okay, I want to teach production level, and junk and boxes. All right, great. Go to a book and read. How do you actually map that into a, uh, a small scale, close to real world activity? And what are the instructional objectives? And What's the student going to do in the off time? How long is the activity? So that development is really, uh, and, and you can't put a price on that either. That's uh, faculty time, that is, uh, but some of that we're willing to also <coughs> help out if, if we can, or if somebody's interested in sharing some of our experiences with that. But there's not much money in equipment in there, for sure. How many students do you have? You average, it look like seven hires a year at Toyota alone and 18 or so co-ops? That was across the college. Oh, oh okay. across the college, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, um, Toyota, the highest they hire is uh, 30 students a year, 30 engineers a year, uh, which was very high on the, on the table right before you know, the decline. Um, on a typical year, they probably get about 15 or so from mostly industrial, mechanical, and packaging engineering, those three. Um, to answer your question, uh, we, we have 250 undergraduates and about 100, uh, 75, maybe 60 graduate students, i.e. Uh, the National Technical Institute for the Deaf has uh, a couple of thousand students. They're very large. Yes, sir. So <clears throat> I'm guessing then you have about 50 students in the class. And so how do you deal with 50 in the lab? My spring orders are crazy. I, I, I teach four, sometimes five sections of the same lab per week. Because we don't, we don't. So you can only probably handle about 10 at a, at a time in the lab? We put the cap at 15, which my department head regularly exceeds. Uh, <laughs> so it becomes 17. Um, I do have situation, it has to be multiples, like 16 is perfect. I can do two groups of eight, or four groups of four, or eight groups of two, which I have activities that all require uh, those group sizes. So 16 is typically the class size for the practicum for mechanical engineering is not mandatory. So those numbers are <coughs> maybe sections of 12 each, one section. <coughs> That's all we have, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, feel free to send me an email or catch me up. Thank you.